Morning, Trainiacs. Consider this day three for me, one for you, at Half Iron Man Worlds, Port Elizabeth, 2018. Yes! Feels nice to be over that jet lag and actually be training again. So that swim trainiacs, pretty good. That was 3,000 meters in under an hour at an average pace of 143. A little bit of floaty pants work in there and uh, I was moving, moving. So this would officially be my, what is today? Sunday, days are still very jumbled. I got in Thursday night. This is like day three and a half. And I haven't really taped much of it because I've been just a total lump trying to get my body clock caught up to the seven hour time difference. That's a bit of a challenge. But I've basically just been getting set up and reacclimatizing my body, built up the bike. Everything surprisingly went really well, unpacked everything, which also went really well, which was kind of surprising because I flew Winnipeg to Calgary over the globe to London, down to Johannesburg, over to Port Elizabeth. And when I was in Johannesburg, they said, do you have any electronics in your suitcase? And I'm like, uh, yeah, quite a bit. And they're like, well, what kind? I'm like, well, drones, cameras, podcasting equipment. Uh, that's not gonna make it to you if you check it in too early. So they made me wait right until the last minute and then zip tied the heck out of my bag. Fortunately, everything got here, bite went together, all good. So on what would have been officially day one on that Friday after putting the bike together, I just went for a one hour cruisy spin. And that was so beautiful on the race course. Roads are a little bit iffy. So I'm gonna run a little bit lower tire pressure. Gotta go with a little bit lower cadence to make sure that I'm, I'm keeping chain tension on because the last thing I wanna do is be bouncing around off the road and you gotta have that little bit of lower tire pressure to keep you on the road, kind of chain tension kept up with that lower cadence and I think I should be all good. The next day, yesterday, I went for a brick workout with new buddy who I met in Boulder through Talbot Cox, Jared Brown and Emma Pallant who is the second seated female. I think we're gonna go do a podcast with her later. Did about 65K on the race course, got a really good handle of it, and then clipped off some pretty fast kilometers, going uh, 4.15 per kilometer on average, somewhere around a 640 mile on the race course. Felt good. And then that swim today, followed up by delicious lunch with, Danielle Dingman and her mom. We all remember Danielle Dingman from Podcast Land, from Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, when she finished fifth in Coeur d'Alene, she qualified for here. Very pumped up for her. So now what's the plan for the rest of the week? Well, basically just do a little bit of something every single day we're talking. Nothing too taxing. Basically in the taper week, you don't wanna stress yourself. You wanna just give your body a taste of some speed. So I'm gonna do, like I said, maybe hour long workouts, little pops of speed, but when it comes to starting to feel tired, back off. We're gonna try to do some podcasts. I think Emma Pallant, uh, Lucy Charles, I think Sam Appleton. We'll see what else we can do. We officially got media accreditation through Triathlon Terran. We are officially media. We exist in the eyes of Iron Man now. Huh? And Mel is flying in right now she gets in in about two hours fortunately ntk can't come she was either going to come to this or to kona kona is all hands on deck much much busier much bigger thing so mel's coming here and we will start shooting stuff because my body clock is firing on a lot of cylinders apparently you're not you're sliding stop sliding stop that 
Why are you tired? Oh. All right, let's give you the very quick tour of this place. It won't take long. It's like 200 square feet. This is it here. This is right by the airport. Very basic stuff, of course. Bed, filthiness, because uh, there's nobody in here but me, so I can be filthy. There's a microwave, nice size fridge, nice size freezer, running water. So I got all my stuff laid out, a little bit of gluten-free Rice Krispies for before workouts, all the nutritional goods for all my workouts. I eat peanut butter like it is a vitamin, so I stocked up on that. Water, because in South Africa there's a water shortage, so the water that is from here, I don't want to risk getting sick before the race, so I buy water, drinking tons of SOS, not letting the dehydration from the flights get to me. All of the electronics is there. All of my gitch is right there. All of my kits are there. Dirty clothes are there. That's the stuff you want to steal. That's the good stuff. And then my open water swim gear, my helmet. Oh, where's my other swim gear? Junk drawer up there, leading into full shower with, you know, things that happen in the bathroom. So that's where I'm staying. I am going to do a little bit of work here and then we'll go pick up Mel, you and me. We'll greet her. I'm sure she would be thrilled to have a camera in her face after 43 hours of flying. Going to pick up Mel. This is right outside where we're staying. And there's just cows hanging out. They're good looking cows too. Is there another one over there sleeping? Nope, that's a log. My farm knowledge is excellent. Wow, Traniacs, if I was the person at Ironman that chose Port Elizabeth as a location for a world championship, I would be scared right now. I would love to take you around and show you the town, but it's basically not hospitable to go outside. Today, about 10 degrees Celsius weather, so around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 kilometer an hour winds, 30 mile gusts, of wind. We didn't go outside. We wanted to do a run on the run course and then swim in the ocean. None of that today. Absolutely none. So if I've got some tips for people racing here this week, number one, make sure that you warm up in the swim, like get your heart rate well up to keep you nice and warm and then bounce around a lot so that you don't cool down. If you can't get into the water, at very least splash water on your face and put some down here so you don't have that shock of getting in the water on the bike so that you can stay warm but not lose a ton of time. Get booties that are already put onto the toe caps of your shoes and then strapped into your bike. Put arm warmers on at very least to take just that biting wind off your arms. Some gloves, so all you really have to do is have your arm warmers under your wetsuit and you just have to put on those gloves before the bike. And then the run, the run is a lot easier to figure out, but you gotta be careful out there. And if you have yet to pack and you're wondering about disc or no disc, just to be safe, I would probably go no disc. I know, I know I've got a disc here, but if all you can pack is one, you go no disc. And Mel's here. It's nice to not just be a weirdo in the corner of a restaurant by myself. All right, Traniacs, if you aren't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. If you are subscribed, stay warm, stay fair.